Hey guys, I'm comic artist Becca Hilburn, but many of you may know me from the conventions that I've done. I have quite a track history with conventions, and I'm the co-founder of How to Be the Con How to Be a Con Artist. .tumblr.com, which is a tremendous resource for those of you who are interested in learning how to sell your wares at conventions, specifically anime conventions, although I do try to push the indie side of things. So today I'm going to show you guys how I draw super cute chibi art. These sort of pictures, these sort of illustrations are a huge part of my convention business. It's the reason why most people know me. And it's, uh, you know, my top seller over at my table. And I don't really do a lot of this sort of art here on the channel. I have a workshop on Wednesday. Unfortunately, none of you guys can make it because this video is going to come out way after. I have a workshop on Wednesday at the Teen Center on how I draw my adorable GB art. And um, I thought I would do sort of a pre-run and prep some of my materials by doing a video for you guys here on the channel. So I hope you guys have got your pencils, I hope you've got your paper, and I hope you're ready to have a good time. So one of the most important things to know about doing chibi art is that you're going to use the same, or at least if you're doing it using my method, you're going to use the same human anatomy basics that you would for a regular figure. The only difference is you're stylizing the proportions a great deal. So when I do chibi illustrations, I start one of two ways. I either start with the head or I start with the torso. I'm going to go ahead and turn this. So let's start with a male torso. For the most part, when I draw men in this form, we are going to simplify the figure. So we've got sort of this um, rectangular shape that's wider at the top than it is at the bottom. If you wanted to draw someone who was a bit more androgynous or of a slimmer build, you would just draw the rectangle like this. And if you wanted to draw a female or a woman, adult woman is really where we're going with this, what I would usually do is an hourglass figure. And it's generally, oh, you guys can't even see that. It's generally more accentuated than it would be if um, I were drawing a realistic figure. So we're gonna start with the male and I'm just going to draw a generic body because I don't have anybody in particular in mind for this. So we've got that rectangular shape that you guys can barely see. Next, I draw an egg shape for the torso, same as I would if I were doing a full-fledged figure. I denote where the neck hole is gonna be. I draw the bow of the shoulders, so that's sort of like the collarbone. And then depending on the pose, but we're just gonna do a very basic pose for right now, because you can always uh, sort of manipulate the pose of the figure to your taste, but this is just to show you guys the basics. I will draw in sort of a skeletal form and the skele the arms and legs sort of stick figure like that's based on Andrew Loomis's figure drawing for all it's worth. So that's a good basic casual pose. Then uh, mark it in with a stick for the neck and then a sphere for the head. So I'll go over that again in real time. And the only thing that really changes between drawing a kid, a woman, um, or a man, or someone who's sort of androgynous is uh, just sort of the way you handle your proportions. So you might choose to draw your male chibis with smaller heads and sort of play down the cuteness. I mean, it is the, in the intention is to draw something cute anyway. And these pencils are terrible. And for the feet, I usually block them in with triangles. So um, we've got our basic skeletal form. So next thing you wanna do is use cylinders to start fleshing things out. So cylinder for the neck, cylinders for the arms, 
And so something else that's different between the way I do um, detailed figures like I would for 7-inch Kara, my comic, and these chibi illustrations is that I usually make the hands really large, hands and feet really large, and that just sort of pushes the cuteness. So the wrists are going to be larger than where they meet the elbow. And the same is going to apply to the lower legs. So here you have a basic male template. And you can sort of flesh out the figure however you want, but this is a good base to start with. So next I will demonstrate the female figure. So we're going to go with an hourglass and you can choose to make the hips as large as you want. You really can play around with the proportions to suit your character or to suit the character that you're drawing. Rib cage. Then across the rib cage, about the midway, I will draw a line where I'm going to place the breasts, neck hole, pelvis, terrible pencils, <laughs> legs. And we're just going to do the generic high pose. So I might opt to give her a larger head. Just sort of push that cuteness and also a rounder face. And you can sort of mix and match these features to suit the character that you're drawing. But in general, men tend to have sharper faces, even in a style like this. Women tend to have softer features, um, especially if you're doing these um, like as portraits. And believe it or not, trying to catch a likeness of someone in this style is really important to me. I do try to make all of the chibi commissions I draw look like the person who it's supposed to look like. It's not just like a thing I don't care about. I know that with sometimes with these simplified styles, people can make that assumption, but that is not the case. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys how to break down the face. I like to do the face in three. So you have a middle eye and then the two eyes on the side. Now a normal human face is five eyes wide, but with this sort of uh, super deformed proportions, it's really only gonna be four with a half eye over here and a half eye on this side. And then I mark in where the eyebrows would be. So on female chibis, for the most part, unless I'm drawing a specific person, um, the arms are going to be a little bit thinner than I normally would do, would do with guys. And the hands are still big, but probably not as big. I really try to push the big hands and feet on the male chibis since that's something that's like stereotypically male. It's, um, it just makes it easier uh, to recognize even in this really cute style that I'm drawing a guy. And I handle hands similarly to how I handle them, except they're a little more cartoony. That's what I'm always thinking of when I'm doing chibi illustration is how can I make this more cartoony? How can I make it cuter? How can I make it rounder? How can I make it more fun? Or conversely, how can I make it more angular? Um, because it's all about finding those details that uh, make the character or whatever you're drawing. Because I've drawn all sorts of stuff in this style. I, I am also sort of known for doing um, Gundam drawings, uh, typically Zaku's because I just tend to prefer Zaku's. Um, but I do them in this style as well. So it's all about finding those hallmark hallmarks and sort of accentuating those. So, And if you like what you see here, you can always commission me. You can let me know in the comments if you're interested, or you can check out natasoup.com slash products, I believe. Um, and there'll be a card at the end of the video if you would like to commission me. All right, so that is a basic female figure. So we've done male, we've done female. So next we're going to do a child figure. And um, this is sort of what you could think of as your default. So you do have a rectangle, but it doesn't necessarily have wider shoulders or wider hips. It's just sort of like a gummy rectangle, right? Everything is going to be a little smaller, usually a little rounder, a little cuter. 
and don't feel bad if you are not quite as quick as me. I have literally drawn thousands of these thousands of these since I started doing conventions and for my con merch and for commissions. So I have, I could be, I think I could be dead and my hand would still know how to do it. So everything is shorter. You might want to make everything stockier too, just to sort of emphasize like cute childlike chubbiness. That's really up to you though. And the character you are working on put the hands behind the head why not okay so we've got the chibi body i think down pat like i said it's very similar to how you would normally construct a human figure um it's just a change in the proportions and i'm sure what you guys are really waiting for is how to draw chibi faces so let me sharpen these terrible pencils. I bought them because I thought they could put down a line wide enough for the audience to see, but they're very waxy and just terrible. <laughs> so for the most part, faces are also built very similarly to how you would normally, if you have sort of an anime style, to be fair, um, if you have that sort of a style, it would be very similar. But again, it's all about changing the proportion. So we're going to draw a very simple, basic, cute shape. So I draw a circle, I put the crosshairs, and then I do kind of like a C, like the jaw or the cheeks, right? Very simple. And the cranium, the skull part of the head should be larger than the face part, if that, if I'm making any sense. And then that three eye thing we just talked about. Let me see if I can't get, no, not really. So we've got the three eyes. And then I like to do big sort of cup ears. I think they're very cute. And then I like to do little button noses. Some people don't do noses at all. Some people do like the weird little L thing, but I think the button noses are cuter. And then a smile. And there's loads of ways you can draw. So with Chibi art, it also helps to over emote, over exaggerate the emotions, just pushes that cuteness. So maybe we would do cheek blushes and then I do circles around the eyes to sort of denote where the eyebrows are gonna go. Eyebrows, then mark where the bangs would go. So on a normal face, right? You've got, you start with a sphere, then you put your crosshairs to show where the middle of the face is. And then, right, you've got kind of the longer jaw, right? And then between the eye line, cause that's what this is gonna be, the eye line and the top of the head, you have where the hairline usually would start. Middle, you've got where the nose would go. And then a normal head is approximately five eyes wide. And then between the bottom of the nose and the chin, about midway, it varies for, per person. And if you're drawing a likeness, these are just guidelines. That's where the mouth would be. And then from the top of the eyebrows to the bottom of the nose is the size of the ear. That's where the ear goes. Okay. So with a chibi, you're kind of just, um, you're just kind of modifying that to make it cuter. And generally, big eyes are very cute. Uh, simplified features are very cute. And then you wanna draw your hair and um, you might, even if you have like a really detailed hairstyle, you might, this isn't, this isn't something that is necessarily applicable to everyone, but you might want to sort of simplify your hairstyle into something little blockier and cartoonier and cuter. But again, this isn't universal. There are plenty of people who have this style of drawing who do very, very detailed hair and it looks great. And there are people who have a more realistic style who do kind of blockier hair and it looks great. So this is just sort of, sort of a general guideline. And then for the eyes, you can go a lot of different directions with um, doing chibi art and eyes. I'm going to demonstrate what I commonly do for conventions, which is just sort of in general round 
open eyes. A lot of people refer to them as like anime eyes or manga eyes, but they're just not detailed enough to really be called that. Um, they're more cartoony than anything. So upper eyelid, lower eyelid, eye shine. And that's, that's about that. That's a basic uh, chibi face. Another variation on that is the dots for eyes, which has also paid my rent over the years, which is even simpler. You don't even necessarily, oh, these are terrible. You don't even necessarily need to mark out where the eyes are gonna go. Just make sure they're equidistant or the equal space from the middle of the face. Okay, so that is two ways you can draw a chibi face. Now let's pull the whole thing together. So for this, I'm going to, now you're gonna know why I did the non-photo blue underneath or the light blue underneath. For this, we're going to start with the blue and then I'm gonna go over it with this probably equally terrible black color pencil. It's also cuter if you over exaggerate the pose a bit. And when I'm doing these icons, unless the people specify what they want or they strike a pose, um, I have some stock poses that I usually turn to. And I'm a real big believer in learning by repetition. So that's why I am showing you these same things over and over and over again. Uh, hopefully they'll start to click. Gosh, so tempted to draw in Yasha. I just, <laughs> uh, I started this without having an end person in mind, but it's got sort of a male build, so I'll roll with that. So I'll thicken his neck up a little bit. Make his features a little more angular. Complain a little more about how awful these pencils are. And if you find a tool is impeding your ability to draw or behaves in a frustrating manner, or uh, is just not up to the standard of quality you're used to, you do not have to use that tool. You can, you can toss it or give it to someone else who might better know how to use it or whatever. But don't feel like you're shackled, like you have to use something that's gonna fight you. Because if it makes you hate what you're doing, it's not worth, it's not worth developing a distaste for your, your art. Okay, so we've got the basic details down. Now we can refine them. Let's see if this will even draw over that. These are super duper waxy. So there's a good chance I might be digging out some China crayons for Wednesday. So I'm mostly just reinforcing what I drew. Now y'all can see it because it's in black. Some people like to draw the eyebrows over the hair. Some people like to draw them under the hair. Um, it's really up to you. Uh, if it really helps sell the expression, then by all means, draw them over the hair for this. I'm going to have templates of male, female, and baby, or not baby, but kid, um, for my patrons to have to download. So if that seems like something you would be interested in, definitely check my Patreon out. Or attend one of my workshops. So jeans are pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, you do want to add creases here at the crotch at the knees and where it would break at the feet. You can also add pockets and the stitching, stitchings on the outside of the leg and on the interior of the leg. Okay, so I hope you found this tutorial on how I draw chibis to be helpful, to be useful. If you have any questions or if you'd like to see something gone over in specific detail, please do let me know in the comments below. I can't know how to help you guys unless you tell me how to help you and I would love to help you. If there's something that you need to see demonstrated in a slower way or in a different way, let me know that as well. I, again, am here to 
help you guys out as best as I can. If you would like to see a detailed anatomy tutorial, I do have some of those in my drawing tutorials and tutorials playlists. But if there's something with that that I have not covered that you would like to see covered, again, just let me know and I'll try to get to that as well. If you are in the Nashville area, I would love it if you could come out to one of my shows. I'm going to be at MTAC and Akai Con and the Cherry Blossom Festival. And you can check my blog for an updated list of all the shows that I'm going to be attending in Nashville and outside of Nashville. So who knows, I might be in your city. And it would be great if you came out to see me and to say hi, it would really mean a lot. If you like my art, if you think my art is cute, you can uh, enjoy more of my art by reading my webcomic, 7inch Kara, at 7inchkara.com and 7inchkara.tumblr.com. And if you enjoy how I teach drawing, if you'd like to learn more about drawing and comics and watercolor and alcohol markers, head on over to my blog at natosoup.blogspot.com. So thank you guys so much for watching. As always, it's a pleasure to hang out with you. I hope I've inspired you today. I hope I've answered some questions you didn't even know you had. And I hope you will pick up that pencil and start Start drawing. It's always great to hang out with you guys and I hope to see you again really soon. Bye!